Secretary, please call the roll. Allen, Anderson, Bates, Bell, Barry Hill, Block, Canella, De Leon, Fuller, Gaines, Galjoni, Hall, Hancock, Hernandez, Hertzberg, Hill, Hueso, Huff, Jackson, Lada, Leno, Leva, Lou, McGuire, Mendoza, Mitchell, Monning, Morlock, Morell, Wynn, Nielsen, Pan, Pavley, Roth, Runner, Stone, Vidak, Wykowski, Wolk. Members, we are absent a quorum. We are scheduled to begin quickly at 9 o'clock. If sergeants can please call the members' offices, bring them to the floor as soon as possible so we can commence with session. Thank you. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen, Anderson, Bates, Bell, Berryhill, Block, Canella, De Leon, Fuller, Gaines, Galjoni, Hall, Hancock, Hernandez, Hertzberg, Hill, Hueso, Huff, Jackson, Lada, Leno, Leva, Lou, McGuire, Mendoza, Mitchell, Monning, Morlock, Morell, Wynn, Nielsen, Pan, Pavley, Roth, Runner, Stone, Vidak, Wykowski, Wolk. Members, the quorum is present. Would the members on, and our guests be on the rail and in the gallery please rise we will be led in prayer this morning by our chaplain, Sister Michelle Gorman, after which please remain standing. We will be led in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag by our colleague from the City of Old Traditions and New Opportunities, Senator Jeff Stone.
Our prayer today is taken from Psalm 106. Quiet us, O silent speaker, that out of still spaces we may hear your word. May we walk with faith every day, aware of the interdependence of all living things, and come to know you in everything and in each other. Quiet us, O silent speaker, that out of still spaces we may hear your word. From the galaxies and the further stars to the smallest atom in our heart, you are the flame of love. May we be blessing to the universe and see your divinity in the within and the without of all things. Quiet us, O silent speaker, that out of still spaces we may hear your word. Gather us together, O healing presence, that we may live in peace with all people and bring glory to your name. Amen. Colleagues, please join me in pledging allegiance to the greatest flag on this planet. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, members. We are now going to move to privileges of the floor. It's time to recognize any member. Uh, Senator Hall. Senator Hall at Senator De Leon's desk. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President and Senators, as a reserve deputy sheriff for the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department, I am pleased to recognize three Los Angeles Police Department officers who have been recognized by the Los Angeles Police Protective League for their outstanding work on Skid Row Task Force. Officer Dion Joseph is a 20-year veteran of the LAPD and has been a senior lead officer over Los Angeles Skid Row since 2003. In this position, Officer Joseph created a high-visibility, community-based, crime-fighting tactic dubbed the sit-down technique to help deter drug dealers and users from selling and using narcotics near drug programs and shelters. Officer Andre Lanier has received 21 commendations for excellent police work during his time with the LAPD, and most of those were earned conducting footbeats in Skid Row. He also recently completed 36 hours of the most comprehensive mental health training available to patrol officers. Officer Delano Hutchins has received 23 commendations for excellent police work during his time with the LAPD and has excelled as a community relations expert working footbeats in Skid Row. Prior to joining the LAPD in 2009, Officer Hutchins was a first sergeant in the Marine Corps retiring honorably after 20 years of service. With him is Lieutenant Bill Brockway, a colleague and a, and a classmate of mine from the most wonderful University of Southern California, Fight On, along with Jared Sandoz, a member of the Board of Directors for LAPPL. One second. These officers epitomize the dedication, the dedication of peace officers throughout California who seek to provide the highest level of service and protection to our communities. Please join me and the LA delegation of senators in recognizing LAPD Officer Dion Joseph, Officer Andre Lanier, and Officer Delano Hutchins for their outstanding service to the people of Los Angeles. They're also joined with their wonderful wives. <laughs> Welcome to our guest from the Los Angeles Police Department. <laughs> Take a quick second and then we'll...
Mr. President, once again, let's give a round of applause for our great members of the LAPD. Senator Canella, under privileges of the floor. Uh, yeah, purpose of introduction, Mr. President. Without objection. I rise today to introduce Michael Thompson from the city of Ceres, which is my hometown within my Senate district. Uh, Michael's up here in the, the gallery. Uh, at the age of uh, 13, Michael has served his community with enthusiasm and dedication. Michael's commitment to his community was recognized when he was one of two young men nominated for the Ceres Chamber of Commerce 2014 Young Citizen of the Year Award. In February of 2014, Michael was presented the Theodore Roosevelt Youth Medal for Outstanding Performance of Duty by the Navy Sea Cadets, as well as being recognized as the Cadet of the Year. Michael has also participated in the Junior High Science Olympiad and has made academic excellence for a 4.0 grade point average several times. Michael's commitment to his community and his academics is encouraging. Let's welcome uh, Michael to the State Senate. Michael, thank you for being here. Welcome to the California State Senate. Senator Huff. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to draw attention also to the gallery uh, for one of my residents from Chino Hills, Kendra Fair, 11-year-old student from Chino Hills Christian School, who brought me a uh, long list of suggestions. Uh, and as we all know, there's no shortage of suggestions for how to run government more efficiently. She's accompanied by her dutiful aunt, Christine Parvin. Please give them a welcome. Welcome to your state capitol, Senator Stone. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I would like to draw attention to Providence, Rhode Island, where I'll be on a red eye uh, this evening in honor of my nephew, Travis Ford Rubin, who is a graduate of the UCSD School of uh, Aeronautical Engineering. He is going to be graduating from officer school tomorrow morning. I'm delighted I'm going to be there for him, and he will then go to Pensacola, Florida, where he will be trained as a fighter pilot in the U.S. Navy. And I wanted to recognize my, my nephew, I'm very proud of him, Travis Ford Rubin, who's going to be a wonderful uh, warrior for, this, for the United States of America and protecting our freedoms and liberties. Thank you for the opportunity to recognize my nephew. Thank you, Senator Stone. Congratulations. Senator Nielsen. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the Senate, on the condition of the file announcing an anniversary. This is the 150th anniversary, ladies and gentlemen, of the Senate of the surrender by Robert E. Lee of the Army of Northern Virginia through Ulysses Grant ending the Civil War. That was a significant and trying event in the history of this country. It's often in the news and books written about it every year. It's something we must never forget. It's a key event in our history. It's proper to acknowledge this event today. Thank you, Senator Nielsen. Senator Huff at Senator DeLeon's desk. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, I stand here today uh, wishing to recognize one of my outgoing staff. As we all know, our jobs are only done as well as our staff who help support us in the many roles that we do. And uh, Peter DeMarco has served the Senate and the state legislature honorably among his many duties that he's done here. He currently serves as our caucus communications director, but among the many things he's done, he's worked for Senators Cox, uh, Senators Wyland, he worked for Doug Osi. He also served Governor Pete Wilson. He's gonna be going down to Orange County to serve as the director of Legislators Affairs. We have a nice resolution here with a lot of whereases, but the basic thing is thank you, Peter, for a job well done. Congratulations, Peter, and don't forget, once a staffer, always a staffer. Members, any other privileges of the floor? Seeing and, seeing and hearing none, uh, message, we're gonna move to messages from the governor. Messages from the governor will be deemed read. Messages from the assembly will be deemed read. Reports of committee will be deemed read and amendments adopted. Members, we now move to motions, resolutions, and notices.
Without objection, the Senate journals for April 6th through April 9th, 2015 will be approved as corrected by the minute clerk. Any other motions, resolutions, and notices numbers? Great. We will now move to consideration of the daily file. Moving uh, first to second, our second reading file. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 366, 244, 432, 559, 181, 182, and Senate Bill 183. Thank you. Moving to governor's appointments. We'll, pa we'll temporarily pass. We'll move to unfinished business. File item 13. Senator Vidak, are you prepared to bring up this item? Secretary, please read. Senate Joint Resolution 2 by Senator Vidak relative to immigration. Senator Vidak. Mr. President and members, I rise today to present Senate Resolution 2, which is back from the Assembly on concurrence. SJR 2 calls on the federal government to reform our broken immigration system. Senator Vidak, can you please give me a second, member? It's a little noisy if we can keep our noise level down, if not take our conversations to the back of the chamber. Senator Vidak, you may proceed. SGR 2 calls on the federal government to reform our broken immigration system so that we can keep families together and allow folks to come out of the shadows. Our current immigration system has not seen any major changes for over 25 years. Patchwork attempts have been attempted to mend its deficiencies, but have failed to address the major problems. With a new congressional session called into session early last month, it is important that this legislature call on the Congress and the President to work together to reform our immigration system and replace it with one that works. Amendments taken in the Assembly added co-authors. I ask for your I vote. Members, a bit of discussion on this item. Senator Huff. Thank you, Mr. President. I also rise in support of SDR 2. Congress and the President must work together to enact a comprehensive and legal solution to our immigration problems. Our immigration system is clearly broken. It's been over 25 years since the United States Congress has enacted major immigration legislation. There are now approximately 11 million undocumented immigrants living in the United States. Many are law-abiding residents who came to the USA seeking the American dream and who want to work and raise their families without the fear of being separated by deportation. The failure of the federal government to act has burdened the states with the responsibility of dealing with this matter, and California is bearing the brunt of it. While California lawmakers take the initiative to address many of the difficulties undocumented immigrants face, these complex issues cannot be solved without the help from Congress and the President. Immigrants are an important part of the California's way of life and greatly impact our economy Senator, and the Senator dynamic. Senator Huff, please. Members, it's still way too noisy. We, it's hard to hear, Senator Huff. Again, if you have conversations, please take them to the rear of the chamber. Senator Huff, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Immigrants are an important part of California's way of life and greatly impact our economy and the dynamic fields of technology, agriculture, and hospitality, to name a few. A large share of our small business owners are immigrants who create new jobs and strengthen our state economy. Indeed, I have the most immigrant voters of all Senate districts in the state. As a matter of national security and economic prosperity, we call on the federal government to prioritize the deportation of lawbreakers and dangerous individuals and to ensure our borders' security. SJR 2 urges Congress and the President to enact a sensible pathway to citizenship, preserving the American dream for all. This is something that's past due. I ask for your I vote. Thank you. Senator Wesso. Thank you, Mr. President and members. I also rise uh, today to speak in support of SJR 2. It's important to keep in mind that the legalization issue is not only a, human, a humanitarian act, but it's also a form of economic stimulus. The 1986 Immigration Reform and Control Act demonstrated that workers with legal status earn more than workers who are unauthorized. These extra earnings generate more tax revenue for federal, state, and local governments, as well as more consumer spending, which sustains more jobs in U.S. businesses. Recent studies suggest that the economic value of a new legalization program would be substantial, amounting to tens of billions of dollars in added income, billions of dollars in additional tax revenue, and hundreds of thousands of new jobs for native-born and immigrant workers alike. In short, 
A new legalization program for unauthorized immigrants would benefit everyone by growing the economy and expanding the labor market. What does this mean for California? According to a recent study conduct, conducted at my alma mater, UCLA, so it has to be accurate, removing the uncertain, uncertainty of unauthorized status allows legalized immigrants to earn higher wages and move into higher paying occupations and also encourages them to invest more in their own education, open bank accounts, and buy homes and start businesses. <clears throat> what did we show by the by allowing immigrants to get driver's licenses that we can improve safety in our streets. Many more th of these kinds of improvements can happen in our, our country by making <clears throat> people that are already here legal. Wages of unauthorized workers would increase $26.9 billion, generating $5.3 billion in additional tax revenue, and creating 633,000 new jobs in the first three years alone. We, uh, a, a study of immigrant immigra integration at USC found that California's unauthorized Latino population lost out in $2.2 billion in wages each year because of their lack of legal status. Were they to earn this additional $2.2 billion, the rise in income would spur direct consumption spending by about $1.75 billion per year. This would ripple throughout the, the state economy, generating an additional $1.5 billion in direct local spending. Such an increase would direct and uh, in indirect and direct consumer spending of about $3.25 billion would generate over 25,000 additional jobs in the state. If unauthorized workers were granted legal status, the state would benefit from a gross increase of $310 million in income taxes each year. I want to thank uh, Senator Vidak for bringing this important measure forward. And uh, this is a message to Washington that this is a, a very important issue to our state and to our country, and they should act immediately. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Wesso. Senator DeLeon. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I also want to congratulate you on your sartorial style. You take ties to a different level. You know, uh, Mr. President, so I want to congratulate you on that. Perhaps the Secretary of Senate can give us an interpretation of the, the use of ties here on the uh, Senate floor, but... Uh, it's called an ASCAR and it's completely NASCAR. appropriate. There we go. It's an ASCAR. Okay. <laughs> but congratulations. You know, colleagues, I support, I rise in support of uh, Senate Joint Resolution Number 2 uh, by Andy Vidak. And as many of you know, uh, Speaker Atkins and myself, the chairs of the respective legislative caucuses, as well as vice chairs, Vice Chair Isidore Hall from the Black Legislative Caucus, Marty Block, Senator Block from the Jewish Legislative Caucus, uh, we had the Women's Legislative Caucus represented there today, to, yesterday, a few days ago, as well as the LGBT Caucus. We all came together in unison on a package of bills dealing with the issue of immigration. Now, this package, with the other efforts in the past recent years, and this resolution being authored by a Republican, shows that we have come a long way in California, a long way since the days of Prop 187. And this does contrast with other states where Republican lawmakers have passed measures to criminalize immigrant families and to separate children from their parents, mothers and fathers, whether it is in Arizona, Georgia, or Alabama. And it has been Republican politicians, Republican politicians that have led the lawsuit against President Barack Obama, Mr. Obama's executive action, resulting in an injunction that has put the lives of millions of immigrants on hold. This lawsuit has been led by the governor of the state of Texas, Greg Abbott, the attorney general, 
Ken Paxton, as well as Republican governors of the states of Arizona, Alabama, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, and 20 other states throughout the country. Recently, in Washington, D.C., the Republicans led the charge to hold up the budget for Homeland Security based on the issue of the lawsuit on DAPA and DACA, litigation against the executive branch of government, the President of the United States of America. And I want to give a few quotes on this issue by several members of the House, Republican members. Congressman Don Young from Georgia, quote, I used to own my ranch. My father had a ranch. We used to hire 50 to 60 wetbacks to pick tomatoes. Republican Congressman from Georgia, Paul Brome, these illegal aliens are criminals, and we need to treat them as such. Republican Congressman from Iowa, Steve King, for everyone who is a valid Victorian, and he's referring to the dreamers, there's another 100 out there that weigh 130 pounds. They've got calves the size of cantaloupes because they're hauling 75 pounds of marijuana across the desert. He used another analogy with regards to dog breeding. You got to pick the good immigrants from the bad immigrants. And most recently, he tweeted that President Barack Obama invited, quote, a deportable, end quote, to the State of the Union, criticizing the 20-year-old dreamer invited to sit with the First Lady of the United States in the box. I mention these quotes. I mention these quotes because it is important that we remember that the rest of the country is so far behind us here in California. And I am thankful to my colleagues here, to the leader of the minority party here in the Senate, who we just spent a wonderful, constructive time together uh, in Japan just recently, and spending time with his wife, who's an immigrant from Taipei, Taiwan, from the author of this measure, Senate Joint Resolution Number 2, from the Central Valley, who has a sizable population that has been impacted because of drought, and the scarcity of water, and the high unemployment rate, and recognizes this. To my other colleagues here, that we're coming together on this issue, that California is different, unlike other, other states, especially the colleagues in Washington, D.C. I rise in support of Senate Joint Resolution Number 2, but I also believe it is incumbent for our friends here in California to increase the pressure on other individuals, such as Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy, who's just right down the 99 freeway, and to increase the pressure on your friends so we can actually get this to happen and come to fruition. Symbolic resolutions are very important because they unify, unify us together and send a very clear message. But we're also very close in getting something that historically is very important for all individuals so they can come out from the shadows and be a real true citizen, a real fabric of our society. So I issue out also too, you know, a challenge for our colleagues collectively to come together to increase the pressure on Kevin McCarthy and make sure that, in fact, we can get this done and make sure we as a country can come together as one. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Senator Nielsen. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, America is a land of the free and the home of the brave. And it is a land that has welcomed the teeming masses, as is said on the Statue of Liberty. On some occasions, I've observed that we might need to turn the Statue of Liberty around for what's been going on in illegal immigration in our, in our country. But we have constantly had significant immigration reform. Ronald Reagan signed the most significant. 
In the mid-90s, there was another kind of a mini immigration reform bill. And this now is yet again an attempt at immigration reform. Key in any immigration reform is citizenship. If you come to America, we are welcoming you. If you are here, you wish to stay, then become a citizen. Go through the naturalization process, take the examination, and become a citizen. That's the path our ancestors came, teeming through Ellis Island. They came here and they wanted to be Americans. I work and know so many Eastern Europeans who fled that area after the wall came down. And they came here maintaining their cultural heritage as, as all ethnicities have who have come and assimilated, but they came here to assimilate. And they loved the freedom that they had here in America. And they wanted to become a part of it, so they've sought citizenship, these Russian and Eastern European immigrants. That is the fundamental premise. If you want to come here and stay, you become a citizen. If you don't want to, then you must go back. If you want to come here, and we can have certain short-time visas. We've always had such things as the Becerra program and green card and H-2 to allow some workers to come temporarily. But the key is to keep our heritage what it always has been, a heritage of inclusion, of welcoming everybody, but you come here to be Americans if you're going to stay. An organization I'm very proud of founding is called APAPA, the Asian Pacific Islander American Public Affairs Association. It services primarily to help leadership in the Asian Pacific Islander community, but all ethnicities are involved in APAPA. But one of the few, as one of the few who started this organization, and we deliberated the name. It was important to all of us to make sure America stood out. Asian, Pacific Islander, American. They look at themselves as Americans while they still thrive and appreciate their heritage. We are a melting pot. That's why we are great. We need to continue to be a melting pot of Americans. Thank you, Senator Anderson.